There was an ancient man sitting in an old armchair by the window that jumped up to greet me with an unusually spry vitality to his old creaking limbs. He was a blotchy, shriveled old Caucasian, nearly hairless and thin-framed, presumably well into his eighties by my estimation. He smiled widely with thin lips and grasped my right hand with a surprisingly firm grip. Without so much as an introduction, the old man only asked me if I was ready to get started. I stammered for a moment and said that I needed to discuss the details of the job first. Releasing my hand, he turned back to his chair with a wave and told me that I could name my price after he dictated to me for a while, and that he had to get started right away. Every moment counts, after all, he said breezily. I was taken aback, to say the least, by the whole odd meeting. However, assuming that he might be stricken by a bout of dementia, senility, or some other ailment of his advanced years, I sat down at a small table nearby and pulled out my notepad in what seemed to be at the moment an act of courtesy in light of the possibility of offending a confused old man. At the very least, I figured I would get a notion of how bad off the situation was after I heard him talk for a little while. If the old fellow was feeble-minded, I at least knew I could get off the hook by naming too high a price, assuming he did not ramble on too long. From this point on, I must confess that my usual practicality eluded me almost entirely. The old man, despite his decrepit appearance, spoke fluidly and coherently, spilling out his narrative faster than I could write, even in my swift, sloppy style of personal shorthand. I could scarcely pay attention to what he said at first for trying to write down as much as I could, but it was not long before the story seemed to make itself clear in my mind, almost like watching a film. What he told me was no memoir, as his ad had claimed. Rather, it was some kind of narrative. I do not know if he intended it as fiction, if he thought it was a true story, or even if, though my own good sense prevents me from believing it, the story was actually true. At this point, there is little purpose in retelling more details in my encounter, strange as it was. What I will say is that after a length of time which I would have scarcely believed had passed, not only had I forgotten the issue of payment, but somehow felt as though what I was writing down was the most important thing in the whole world at that very moment. Without further delay, I present the story to my reader as it was presented to me, with only superficial embellishments of style and negligible additions of ambient details. I myself hope that it is truly a work of fiction, though I cannot say for sure one way or the other. What I leave you with now, in addition to this narrative, is what the old man left with me at the conclusion of his dictation. This is one of many stories. Why he chose this particular one to tell me first, I cannot venture to say. But he has urged me to a future return visit for him to dictate another such work, although he would not so much as hint at its nature or contents. W. T. Branton